Welcome back to part six of uh, building a mount for a KNT horizontal mill to mount a uh, vertical head on it. I'm just getting the parts lined up, ready for welding. I uh, wasn't sure how to measure all this to, to uh, get it lined up right on it, so I used an old woodworking trick of the uh, using the scales like uh, winding sticks to, to side along it. Try and get get them parallel, and get everything clamped together, and get ready for welding. check the parallelism, I just put the two scales and then you side along the edges of them until the edges line up and it's a pretty pretty accurate way to get things parallel. At least uh, does a good enough job for this application. They're after running a few well many many beads with the uh, old Lincoln tombstone stick welder got the two parts attached I used a bunch of the um, anti-spatter spray to on well, the parts I didn't want to spatter on and it creates that coating but it does keep the spatter off there's a few of the uh, stubs of the electrodes left over After getting it welded together, then there's a lot of wire brushing and cleaning off the the welds and getting the metal ready, uh, prepped and ready for paint. Well, actually, not paint initially. I first had to do a little sanding and grinding and uh, bondo on the on the welds themselves. all the parts cleaned up and prepped it was time to mix up a little bondo and see if I could make the welds look a little bit prettier and working on so fixing up some of my old machines I've found that the uh, manufacturers use a filler I don't know probably not bondo because everything I've got was made in the 40s or older but uh, something similar so I don't feel too bad about using a little to smooth things out on uh, on this well maybe not a little but uh, enough to make it look good anyway well if not good better If you've ever worked with Bondo, you know what comes next. Sanding and sanding and lots of sanding. Tried to get everything fared in to look nice. But there's a lot of sanding. This is the year I spent working in a body shop when I was in high school. It was mostly sanding Bondo, so... I can claim a little experience there anyway. Spent a lot of time trying to find something with the right radius. Turned out the big fat sharpie markers had a good radius for sanding a lot of it. With the uh, sanding done, it's time to start getting things painted. Um, start out with a sandable primer, kind of a heavy primer that you can 
smooth out nicely. Not that it mattered in this case, but happened to have a couple cans of it around. So that's what it got. After that was mixing up some paint. I went to the Ace Hardware and got some Rust-Oleum black and white and tried to make up a gray that would match the what was already on the milling machine because I quite liked the color it was. Um, didn't turn out that close, but I spent a lot of time trying to get it close. So it was good enough, I guess, when it was done. Apparently wet paint on concrete looks just like what you want, or on cardboard. But when it dries on metal, it's a little lighter. But it was close enough for me. So there's the mostly finished product. The Bondo work came out nice. I'm kind of trying to make it look like it was an old school cast piece, but I suppose it looks like a weldment to most people who know what they're looking at, but it turned out pretty good. Pretty happy with the paint, which then, because of the clo close fit, I had uh, made stuff to rubbed a lot of it off, but well, I've forgotten I did uh, give it a little fine sand and one more coat. Not sure why, but I guess two coats is better than one. After getting the paint and the Bondo done, I had to run a tap through the threaded holes to clean them out. Just kind of a view of the mess that ensued from the painting and Bondo and what not. Pretty much a full mill table. After getting the uh, all the welding and painting done, probably should have done it before the painting, but didn't think of it until after I was done painting. Decided I should face off the uh, back of the plate that goes up against the column to make sure that surface is uh, as, you know, as flat as I can get it. So I uh, just ran a face mill back and forth across it to get that surface cleaned up and flat. One of the main reasons I decided this project was because the k and has such nice power feeds in X, Y, and Z, as well as uh, rapid traverses in X, Y, and Z. I thought this might be a way to take advantage of it with, and get the functionality of a vertical mill for you know, a hobby miller like me. The, the vertical mill with the adjustable quill and easily varied speed is pretty handy for most of the kind of stuff I do. But having the power feeds was a real appealing, a real big appeal to me as well. So now I've got my junior helper out, helping me get things put together. I had to use a little bit of grease on the T-nuts to hold them in place so I could, well, I got everything set in place and bolts threaded in. You get the thing together, it sure is heavy. But at this point, it did look like it might work when it was all put together. So now I was trying to, time to try it all out. See if this, uh, all the work had been worth it. The big ankle plate's handy to give it something to rest on while I get it positioned. And uh, the engine hoist is pretty essential as it's gotten 
much too heavy to move around manually. With the uh, base plate and the head mounted on, it was time to try and fit the whole thing up. It was one of those projects that sure could have used a few more hands trying to get all four uh, bolts lined up into the vertical head. But eventually was able to get it together and get it mounted up. Fortunately, getting the uh, vertical head onto the mount should be a one-time operation. Um, I've, since I've got it together, I've taken it off a couple times to use the mill in horizontal mode and just grab the, um, put some mounting lugs on the vertical head, bolt it on a little, some little plates that I can hook a chain to, and just pick it off with the the uh, engine hoist and swing it out of the way. Uh, and then uh, set it back on. Uh, when I'm done, you have to retram, but that's kind of the way it is, I guess, when you move any mill head. Well, with the mill head on and Mounted up, it was time to give a quick walk around. Kind of a weird looking mill, but I was pretty happy to be to that point. As you can see, the color didn't quite turn out as dark as I'd hoped it. A little white goes a long way when you're mixing uh, paint colors together. I've got a little video clip I'll throw up later when I get around to getting it edited of, of tramming the, uh, this head. You do lose a little functionality of the uh, spindle engagement and disengage on the Cantique because I can't, you can normally swing it around wherever you want so you can reach it, but now it has to stay off to the left side at some angle or the other. But uh, it's a pretty happy day right there. Well, I must say, having it all together now for a while, um, I've really enjoyed using the mill in this configuration. The only thing I have to compare it to is an old Ben Orman number 12 I had that I wish I'd kept, but needed the room. Um, we were just using a big shell mill to got another project that I'll post a video of here in a little bit. I 
made a water swivel, but overall I've been real happy with the, uh, the mount and the, the mill in general. Um, I've got a little video clip I'll post of how I, the way I came up with the tram, but it's probably a little trickier than the, uh, using a bridge port, but they're tramming a bridge port because I don't have all the adjustments that are built in, but it uh, has been working real well. I've been happy with it. Um, here we've got uh, a couple clip shots of a, the head tilted to a mill, some ports and a gun barrel. It worked out pretty well. And the last photo, which is coming up here, is of something I found that may end up mounted on the head because it has a 40 taper, which matches the spindle on the K&T. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, talk to you later.